still make a make a cameo here. They're just so dominant, but on that note, let's get in straight into the land of dawn. This is the battle for first place. Let's see, will it be Onyx ID or Todak for Malaysia? Spam in the chat right now. Go and support your teams because they will need it. And it's actually the Cho in the mid lane. What? CW playing the Yiv in the gold lane. I mentioned this. The flex picks are insane about if we're Onyx, but I didn't expect this levels of craziness. First up, chat, hashtag Malaysia Bole, hashtag Indo Pride. Who do you support? But I gotta say, let's lay it down, all right? What does the mid lane Cho bring? It's a lot of damage. You can treat it like a lane bully. Has a lot of solid CC and a surprising amount of damage. What does gold lane CW bring? It's basically an artillery tank. If you put the Cho there, he's gonna be miserable facing off against Chico Guys 1 1. But if it's CW, you can put up a fight like that. The Void Crystal just puts Chico Guys in such a weird position. Absolutely, and the, the good thing about uh, the Yves going into that gold lane is that wave clear isn't going to be a problem. He is going to be able to wave clear really, really well, but Keyboy is already waiting inside, going oh. for the Abyssal Arrow, will not be able to connect onto it. He's actually still going to go and commit under the turret. Keyboy going and backing up. Drian is there to help him out, though. Goes in for another Abyssal Arrow, tanked away by Yums. Yums just blocking it for his brother, Kiku, guys. Again, we talked about that matchup. Let's go down the bottom lane. This is the XP lane matchup. It's, it's between two fighters that have just such great sustain, the Lapu Lapu and the Yuzhong. I, I've said this yesterday, an XP lane matchup that's between two chunky fighters like this that might lead to nothing is like a dance-off. It's just no violence, just life bars going up. <sighs> Smooth in trouble! Moon is in trouble right now, but maybe it might be Trion here as Yums has joined up in the mid lane trying to help out his mid laner as well. But Sonic is waiting in the bush. He's going to go in. Black Boots not just ready yet. Trion gets a very good Jeet Kune Do onto two members. We'll be able to disengage out of that one for now as Todak have the resources. Don't really have the resources to do anything. They will just recall Onik Esports with the initial engage on the, the objective. Chiku and CW in a 1v1. Chiku goes in and oh my god, clutch gaming from both of the gold laners as he, CW, gets out with a sliver of health. I love the confidence that CW has, but it may have been no misplaced. Way. Railroad Mipulation taking him down on the way out. First Blood Dawn brought to you by Razor, and it's still going. It is still going. Spreon actually goes in for the flicker, gets the way the dragon picks up another, and that's going to be a two for one. Maybe not for long, though, because Moon has joined up in that top side, looking for some fights. The turtle, though, has been taken away by Sans in the bottom side. This is what Onyx Esports likes to do. This is them at their peak. When they are able to just split the map like this, very similarly to their Filipino counterparts, they will be able to secure most of the objectives. I kept uh, trying to keep it back, but as soon as a team fight happened, it had to be said. The power spike for Onyx Esports has come. This is when they want to take these fights, especially with now the ult on Drian, the last Kage able to now find the way of the dragon onto the perfect target. And a lot of scrambles like this in, in the mid-river is going to happen. You can expect that this is going to happen, but Onyx Esports will not fall for it. I think Onyx Esports has superior map control, and so far we've seen that. Despite top lane being Todak's fortress, besides top lane being Todak, uh, for Todak to lose, it's because Onyx Esports knows exactly where people are. It's because of that mountain shark and because of those traps set in by Kiboy. Yeah, but, but look at this actually, Lofel. Now we are going to take a look at the items, mm -hmm. but I have a better question for you. Yves and the Cho has just swapped their lanes. Was it just initially to get that gold up top and then rotate that mage into the mid lane with a significant power spike over the other mid laner? Yeah, I definitely feel like it is one of the situations where they're just trying to buy time, but it looks like another fight is going on here, Mirko. Yeah, another fight is going on. Yums forced to flicker away right there as there was also 1v1 by Keyboy and Moon right there. Again, both teams now just going for the for the back, but it's gonna be Moon actually targeted instantly. Sans picks up the killing spree, and this is why he's so lethal on this hero. The Yi Sans Jin coming in super strong in when it matters. Infinite knowledge coming through, and that's exactly what led to this 4-1 lead. I'm, I'm guessing if that lane switch was just temporary, I guess it was, it was just a rotation. Mm -hmm. It's just what set up Drian for more success. He picks up the antique Kiras and now comes in, joins with this Lord uh, Turtle take, that is. Uh, they're going so fast, it felt like a Lord for me. And again, it goes to Sans Turtle's lane, brought to you by the STB. And now top lane is slowly becoming where Onyx Esports answers. Look at this, Drian with the way of the dragon! Yeah, Drian with the way of the dragon, instantly with the follow-up coming in. The missile arrow will be able to pick up one kill. It's gonna be Yums now targeted, the real world 
Soul Manipulation will be able to lock him down, and that's going to be another kill picked up by Keyboy as they secure a double kill. But Keyboy, he's hungry for more. Drian goes in for the G2, no flicker, unable to connect. Jiku's still able to outplay for now, but now he does have the crossbow of Tang. Not ready, not popped just yet until now. Keyboy still able to tank all that damage. Jiku, he's making the outplay, and he's done it! What is this? Jiku going for more, dodging everything, and oh, oh my god! Malaysia! Malaysian Vikings! The Mal Malaysian Vikings! <laughs> what was that? But now Sans comes over as well. Moon's gonna be the target. Drian trying to go in, but it's gonna be the base from Malaysia. Tonak, Drian going for the way the dragon. Sans in 1v3, still able to kind of wait, but the damage is gonna be enough for Tonak to get the shutdown. This is exactly what Tonak wanted. LaFell set it up so well. Yep. I, 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 I forgot what the term was. What is this place not called? All right, so here is the thing. In Malaysia, we say, Chiku is not afraid of death. Death is afraid of Chiku. He will refuse to fall down. And here is the thing about Toda. They have the Viking spirit. It looks like they're losing, but they are the comeback kings. And right now, they're looking like they're having a momentum over this Chiku plate. Oh, it's beautiful. That opened up the rest of the map for them. Onigi Sports spent too much time there trying to kill, to kill Chiku, guys. And it, it led to quite the lead for the bottom lane here, giving it all to Momo. My goodness, man. You know, in this tournament coming into it, there was a lot of names. CW, Zin, Ohem. Put some respect on Tiku's name, man. This guy has shown what he's got in the M3 stage when it matters the most. This is the battle for the first place. They might have just done it here, all right? The gold lead just now was huge for on Esports, but now it's Todak turning the tides instantly. Chiku, he's not scared of anything. He's actually gonna go dive under the turret and the crossbow on time. What is this? Chiku is going Ultra Instinct. I love when Chiku doesn't care. He's just like, Am I a late game hero? I, I kind of feel like I can go right now. And he just goes right now. And Team Toda, they have this lead. But again, they can't just fall on Chiku. Right now, Yums, he has to play the tank very, very well. He has to, one word, and I'm going to say it twice, helicopter, helicopter, <laughs> protect Chiku at all costs, especially in the later stage of the game. Bing, bang, bada boom. You had to do it. You had to do both at the, in the same line. But, all right, Jiku once again, he's gonna get caught out, actually. He's gonna be taken down, and there you go. It only is gonna cost you a lot. Boots now going in for Yumes with the help of Sans playing in the passive, getting the second kill of this trade. Toda forced to back away. Only three members strong. Will they still force a fight? Moon going in, trying to deal some damage, but Boots will be able to go for the Fierce Dive. Bravest Fighter has been popped to the backside. Gets a stun on the three, and that's gonna be Momo looking for the kills. Boots still able to survive for now, baiting a lot of damage coming in, and that's gonna be Drian going for Flicker the way the dragon onto four mates, and the damage will be enough. Sans now jumping in back and forth, playing the passive, gets another, and that's a four for zero. Just like that, Todak has turned their short-term advantage into basically Onyx Esports' base. They, they gave so much in that fight, and they were scrambling. And to be fair, Onyx Esports, just like they did earlier against Cade, knew how to bounce back, but just the same, the ending of that game was a whole nother story. Let's not count all that out just yet. Back and forth, back and forth. The upsets just keep on going. Onyx Esports with the lead, Toda comes back. Toda with the lead, Onyx Esports comes back. That is the group of death for you, man. And right now, both of the teams need to be very careful. There are no objectives just yet. They don't want to get picked off in this moment. What Onyx Esports has to do here to maintain this 3k gold lead, of course, still dominate and dictate where Todak goes and what they can do, is to try to play with Chiku guys. I, I think Chiku guys, the reason why they lost this team fight Todak, that last team fight where the real room elevation caught Chiku guys right in the middle, is because Chiku guys was confident. I think they have to give Chiku guys a false sense of confidence. It's right here, it's on him now. This whole game, I think, for the next 10 minutes, if he can farm up, that's a win. If he can't and he keeps getting caught out, Odegis was gonna punish. Punish is a right, the right word here, all right? Todak needs to play it very, very carefully, even though they were able to get the lead even out. But now it's going to be Keyboy going for the Abyssal Arrow already, using up a very valuable resource right before the Lord fight even starts. That's Purify gone for 80 seconds. Yeah, and right now, looking at the map, even though the goal difference on Sports is on top, but I feel like even they want to play this out very, very carefully because they do not want to eventually make a mistake over here because right now, the Lord is up. 
and Onyx Esports, they have played a long game today. Their stamina is being tested, but right now, real world manipulation, and Yum's going to the front. Yeah, Moon is going to get chunked really, really low right there, but there wasn't anything Toda could do to answer to that. It's just Moon backing away, and now again, the map control from Keyboy with the Abyssal Traps placed everywhere on the map, it's just really beautiful. But look at Chiku, why is he playing there? These are the questions you would ask to a normal player, but it's going to be Chiku right there, able to get some damage, but Sans on the other side, the double man, two man stun under the turret, Sans will be able to pick up the kill. No answer for the side of Toda. They're not committing for anything right now. They are going to go and try to push in the midway, but with Trian rotating, this might be disastrous. Boots coming in. Chiku caught out of position. Is this going to be a mistake? Boots just circling around, trying to wait, trying to base some time as I'm offended. It goes in and connects. It's going to be Sans going to the backside. Chiku oh! with a crossbow tag will be able to target one. Picks up a kill and is going for more. Now Drian in the midst of it all, trying to run for the hills, going to the opposite side of where he wants to. And Chiku, he's right there. Pops the egg is way the drag and has been popped only to get some damage, get some time left. Drian forces the flicker, but oh. Yums is just right there. And that is gonna be, wait a minute, the last Kage. What is this? He's still able to run for now, but Yums will finally pick up that kill and it is gonna be very worth it for the Malaysian representatives. Two to zero for the Lord. That was quite the tango. Everyone dancing around here and there. Right now, Team Toda, they are going for the Lord. Is this the optimal play? And looks like CW is there. Real Woman Ablation has not been used. And Toda, they've managed to get the Lord. Toda, actually looking pretty good over here. This no. is the reason why you put four maze in the jungle and Chico Guy in gold. You need four maze's confidence and just his reliance on being in the front line. That's the reason why he has a 154 record. Honestly, that's not a bad 154. He's playing a role player Paquito. We've seen many times where the Paquito will suffer some deaths, but eventually he gets this. He was chasing down Drian, and that's what you need to do. Chico guy can't trace down Drian, but so right. you, you have to be there to do it for him. And right now, looking at Yi Sun's Shin, I'm not look. I, I'm not feeling good, right? Not he, a confidence. He has the blade of despair. He has the war axe. When he has those two items, I was scared. Right now, he has endless battle as well as demon hunter sword. Unless Toda finds a way to catch him out, I really don't think they can win any team fight really, really, really confident. But the thing is, you can say the same thing about Chiku, guys. Look at his items. He's completed all of his core items, man. He has the DHS, the Corrosion Scythe, and the Wind Talker. But look at that. That's like you said. Sans is looking for the kills on the Chiku, guys. Already caught very, very low. Gets the inhibitor turret and also chains it with the Tier 2 in the mid lane. Looking for the Tier 2 in the bottom side. And looks like they will be able to get it uncontested. What? Total map control by Todak. Somewhere in the middle of the 10 to 11 minute mark, they just seem to have shifted gears. This is a different Todak, man. This is international Todak. The M World Series Todak. They've this, they've done it every single time. You, When you underestimate this team is when this team is the scariest. They are literally the dark horse of this tournament and they're showing why they are labeled as that. Looking at what Chico guys just picked up, he has now an Athena's shield. Moon now has a genius wand. If the player cams aren't telling you the whole story, there's so much more behind the scenes that's going on. Todak, I can guess that they're feeling a little bit frustrated. They're at 13 and 8. They're, they know that they can win team fights. They know that they're in the lead. But where is that window? I think patience is going to be key here. Todak, just be a little more patient. And Onik Esports may or may not let you slip through a window and you can win a team fight turn around that way but that being said Oniki Sports still in control here they're the ones who can say when and where you can fight and they catch four maze I was about to say what Onik needs to do is look for picks and that's exactly what they do now Drian goes in for the Jiku on the two members flickers the other way to bait some time but it's gonna be Jiku going for the crossbow tank not just yet it's the cancels from Drian the last Kage he's hugging a wall for dear life and that's gonna be Jiku oh! using all of his resources for not Yi Sun Shin is here baby and he's looking for the kill now with Immortality, Poppy's gonna look for a double kill, gonna be able to secure it as Momo tries his best to run away. A four for one right now. They're gonna go for the chase. Momo has nowhere to go. He is gonna be able to use the Brave Spider, but look at the mid lane. It's time for the Onyx turn. We saw Onyx Esports do this in our opener today, but I don't think it's over just yet. Todak is still in this. There'll be a few more defenders here to save their base in just a few more seconds. Five for Moon, Chico Guy is the same. It's a 5v5 defense still, not over just yet. Let's not call it. Neither of these two teams are out. Holy moly, the pattern continues. Todak has the lead, we're gonna take it back. Roll back the clock, man, because let's take a look at the instant replay. Yeah, right now, honestly, for Onik. 
Drian is the guy to watch because yes, he just caught out four mains. But the thing is, he can do that to multiple uh, players from the side of Toda. Yes, Yi Sun's Chin. He is the one that's gonna do the damage. But according to that replay, the guy that Toda has to be careful of is Drian because he is controlling the bush. And if no one is opening the map, then no one is safe. No one is safe indeed. That was just beautiful clinical play right there from Drian. Not only did he get the pick, but he also just hugged the wall. He sacrificed himself for his team. Chiku wasn't able to get that final weakness point, and that was what costed them the team fight. Imagine if Chiku got that crossbow of tank. It would have just been on esports, wiped to the ground. There was nothing that they would be able to do. So just even though it will be bad in his KDA. He's not a stat player. He is a team player. But look at this. Another fight goes in. Todak goes in for the backside. It's still be able to tag, cancel out. But it's going to be the real revelation. Used up. He's going to get taken down. And that's a one for zero. Todak are really, really good at these crazy clutch plays. But Sans, oh my god. Not only is it Chiku going in for the crazy plays, but Sans as well. They get Momo low and they buy themselves a little bit more time. 30 seconds they need that Death timers to come back here because the enhanced Lord is up and ready. Just as I say that, Drian goes and almost finds himself another pick. Battle of Marksmen. Neil, how are you liking this? I love it. Honestly, it's not just the Marksmen because the real targets are the mages and that's where the damage is coming from. And now Todak, I'm not sure if this was the right call. It doesn't feel like it was because Moon goes down. He didn't even get to use Black Shoes. Oh my god. What? Black Shoes wasn't popped. And the <gasps> Abyssal Arrow connects. It's a disaster for Chiku and Todak right now. They've lost their mid laner. And that is going to be the Lord Uncontested. Enhanced Lord for Onyx Esports Bounty in the 16th minute of the game. This can be the final push that they need. Right now, I'm the Malaysian, and Leo's the one like, what is going on? Because this game is a coin flip. I take a coin, I flip it up, who wins? No one will know, because again, both of these teams have shown the pedigree. However, focusing on signs, 10, one, and five, right? Just now, Mirko, you have said in the previous team fight, if somehow Chiku manages to get a crossbow of tank, maybe they can win. I would argue and say it's Sans. Even if Chiku managed to get the crossbow of tank, I feel like he will out damage the 1-1, one -one, especially when he has the Blade of Despair, Endless Battle, and that War Axe. Those three items itself is pretty scary. Having Demon Hunter Sword does not make it easier. True, true, especially because again, Chiku guys, sure, he does have those core items, but no Melfic Roar. So a lot of the tanky members for the side of Onyx Esports, they'll be able to tank that crossbow tank with no problem whatsoever. Let's see what happens here though. Enhanced Lord already marching down the mid lane as that is going to be Sans walking down the bottom side. Trying to play the passive, trying to push the waves, all three at the same time. They're going to go in using the Abyssal Arrow to zone away the members of Todak, but it is a great defense, honestly, from the Malaysian representatives. Discipline is the key here for Todak right now. 18 minutes in, I believe we're in TikTok timers territory. That meaning the timers on death are so much bigger, much more punishable. And that's going to be an engaged on bottom that has me saying question mark. Yeah, oh my god. The thing is, real world manipulation was popped to get some damage, to get some pressure, maybe even just push them all out from the inhibitor turret. But Toda, they don't want to let that happen. They want to stand their ground, aggressive plays that almost costed them the game, but it worked out in the end. This is what you need from both of the teams. You can't be scared to make these kind of engages. And there you have it. Look at there. It's going to be Yams with the amazing I'm Offender turning it around once more. Helicopter, helicopter, Yums right now with the Ruby. He is going to be that playmaker because again, it's very clear for both Toda and Onyx Esports. It's super clear. The main damage dealers are the marksmen because as of right now, the mages, they are getting targeted. Every single time CW wants to open that real world manipulation, he's going to get targeted. He's going to get stunned. And then he won't be able to dish out the damage. Moon, unfortunately, still has not done very, very well on this Lilia. So the tanks, the fighters, oh. if they can protect and look at this, a fight going on, Mirko. Yeah, the fight is going on right now, but it is actually a mistake. Yums goes for it. No follow-up just as of yet. It's going to be Jiku kiting away. Trion trying to look for the play. Crossbow tank is ready, up and ready for the side of Chiku. Not gonna use it just yet. Wants to save that resource for a more a better time here. But it is going to be the Siege continuing in the mid lane. Onyx, oh, Boots goes in for a furious dive on it too. It's still gonna be Moon, Moon going in for the Black Shoes, able to run away. Boots is gonna be chained and taken down by the crossbow of Tang. And there you have it, melting down the Onyx Esports members. It is the defense. Will Onyx be able to come back from this one, Leo? 
they timed it so well. The Black Dragon form being out of commission was so key, but Yi San Xian never count him out. 11, 1, and 5, only falling once. They are going to still remain standing. But the question is, this next Lord, 40 seconds away, this is the next major objective. Yes, on, uh, Onigi Sports got a great defense. They lost all their inhibitors. Toda clean house. Toda did the same thing. But I think the main difference here between these two teams... Todax was just willing to do more crazy things. And that's what got them to this point. I see what LaFell was saying this whole time is sometimes the call is to just not think about it, do it, and get there anyways. And they have gotten to this point. They've threatened Onyx Sports one more time. We mentioned the mechanics coming in from this team, man. And it is shining through in this game at the M3 World Championships. You can't ask for better timing going up against the tournament favorites, Onyx Esports, who have looked shaky. But this is just purely Todak getting the lead. I'd like to say, yes, it's a good mix of mechanics, but it's also the decision making. As funny as it sounds, the whole mantra of how do you know what I'm going to do and I don't even know what I'm going to do, that's essentially what's in play here. That's basically LaFell's process, the thought process behind LaFell every time he plays a game yes. of Mobile Legends. Yes, just be brain dead and the enemy will be surprised and then I will be surprised. We're and then all surprised. How, and then we're all surprised. But again, this is what I did mention, is that Chiku, he does have the damage, but between 1-1 one, one and the Yisun Shin, the Yisun Shin just has a little bit more burst. So Chiku, yes, be brain dead. Do not use your brain by all means. But that one particular moment, try not to 1v1. Sons. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that one. You know, be brain dead, but at the right time. Yes. Is that what you're trying to say here, yes. Lofel? All right. Boom, well, bang, bada beam. Okay, yeah. boom, bang, bada beam. But it is going to be Todak once again, getting the pressure all across the map with the inhibitor turrets taken down. That will mean that every single lane will be auto pushing every single time. Where it's going to be Momo going in, almost getting the sun off. Sun's able to sidestep for now, still able to kite back. But it is going to be Onik actually losing their momentum. Drian goes in for the way the dragon onto Moon. Not going to be able to Whoa. get anything there. It's going to be actually the Crossbow oh, Tang popping in, getting the kill. Now, both of the inhibitors, both of the Inhibitors have been taken down. The bottom side is wide open. Oh! And that's where Paquito's going. Look at it. Yim, he's trying to go and defend the base. But it's going to be Boots caught out of the bad situation. They're forced to back away. Four maze with the back door. Immortality has been popped. Will he be able to end the game? One oh! more hit. And Malaysia. Oh! This error must be reported. Going to go to the other.